Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm Pastor Teddy Marshall of Word Fellowship Ministries, and I want to thank you for coming back. Praise God, praise God. So if you like what you receive from, um, from these broadcasts, I ask that you would like and share and comment and subscribe. Let's get those numbers up. It's not, y'all you, you know my heart. It's not about the numbers, but it is nice to see them go up. <laughs> Anywho, what's most important to me and to my heart is that um, what the Lord puts on my heart to share and to relate to you is it really gets in your heart and marinates and takes you where he wants you to be. And you come into that place of uh, intimacy with him. That's really, that's my main goal and uh, the desire of my heart is that you come into intimacy with God. Amen? Okay, so um, today I just want to share something about love. Loving the Lord. And loving him personally, loving him for yourself, knowing him for yourself, experiencing him. It's not just about having these little um, little spouts or episodes of, oh, wow, the Lord showed up. Ooh, praise God. Okay, fine. It's more than that. Yes, he does. He does do that. Praise God. Praise God. He's got me out of a whole lot of jams. And I'm quite sure you can think of something he's gotten you out of. But he is so much more than that. He wants us as a, to be with him in, in, as a lifestyle, fellowship as our lifestyle, spend time with him as our lifestyle. We eat food. His word is food for our spirit. We need to nourish our bodies. Some of us nourish our bodies more than we probably should. But, <laughs> but we can never overdo nourishing our spirit man with the word of God. And yes, there are messages like this, and there are other messages from other ministers and pastors that um, we're privy to, and on, whether online or we're going into the church house, and we're hearing the pastor preach, and it's a good message, and we get all fired up and excited, and you know the Holy Spirit may be flowing in there. I pray the Holy Spirit is flowing in the place where you worship. I, I'll believe that the Holy Spirit is flowing in there. Um, you may have your own, you know, times of sitting down with him and just experience his love enveloping you. But see, all of that is good. But what God wants is for us to live in him. He wants us to be able to experience him as our lifestyle. So there are uh, accounts because I, I don't like to say stories when we're talking about testimonies and stuff, because in my mind, stories give the impression that it's made up you know that, that the, oh yeah tell me a story no these are encounters that we hear these are accounts that we hear or that we wit witness or experience and there are those that are those accounts that are passed down through the generations. Uh, our grandmother may have told you some things that happened and told you about God. Could be an auntie, uncle, grandpa, grandpa. It could be um, pa parents or siblings. You know, whatever. Uh, let's say family members who have told you about things from generations past that have happened and it's come down the line and 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 it's a legacy of your family knowing God. But if it's only limited to you receiving accounts down the line and, and, and they're passed on word of mouth, that, as great as that is, there's so much more. And it's, it's, like, it's almost like driving a car on fumes. You know, it's good, you got it, okay, fine. But you're only going to get so far. You have to know, especially in this day, and what's to come. Um, I know that a lot of us, well, unless you've been living under a rock, excuse the shaking, um, unless you've been living under a rock with the, you know, the different challenges that we're experiencing in our world today, I think that is more and more evidence of our need to be one-on-one -on -one with God, to be in intimacy with him. There's no other way we're going to get through this and be in our right mind. There's no other way but through and with and by God. 
we do that, of course, the first step is salvation through, through Jesus Christ, his son. Accepting him and, and confessing him as our Lord and Savior. That's the first step to that, that intimacy, that intimate bond with the he Heavenly Father. But there are also times where it could be um, things that we've experienced. And it was like, wow, something really magnanimous has happened. And we know it was God. There's no other way to explain it. And we're like, oh, wow, that's, that's good. But you see, God's not just limited to those types of uh, encounters. When we live in God, when we uh, uh, rely on him in that way, trusting him with all our heart and leaning not to our own understanding, that's what gets us through. That's what carries us through, but it also keeps us at peace when turmoil is around us or uncertainty is trying to encroach on our peace. And then the, uh, that intimacy with God, the Holy Spirit will say, wait a minute, baby girl. Hold on, baby boy. Mm, no, I got you. And you may not hear it. You know, I know you probably hear people say all the time, the Lord said, and he does speak to us, but there are different ways. And he knows the best way to reach us at any given point in time. It, and it won't be the same way all the time. But the way we'll know it's him is that peace that passes all understanding. People are going to let us down, people in, in, in uh, authority, people who are supposed to have guardianship over our lives, over our hearts, whether it's family or pastors or bosses or you know, corporations. People can work for a certain business or corporation for years and it's time to retire or they work for years and something slight can happen and oof, you're gone, you're out the door. Or you never do get that gold watch that they used to do. I know I've heard, okay? I'm not that old, but I heard that they would, a person would get a, a gold watch when they retired and stuff. And there's no real celebration about you or for you throughout your life. And you may be feeling like you're out there and you're all alone. But the Lord said, no, you're not. I celebrate you all the time. You're, a, a, you're, you're of my workmanship. You're of my hand. Uh, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I made you, says God. And everything I make is right. So we may have shortcomings here and there. And some may wish that they you know, uh, looked, a little, maybe looked a little better or in their opinion. Or they wish they were taller or shorter or slimmer. <laughs> Some even wish that they were a little wider, <laughs> a little curvier, all these different things. Some may want to, you know, six pack, you look in the mirror and you, you're disappointed with the way you look. But you see, God doesn't see us that way. He sees us when he, he looks at us. He's like, that's my, that's my child. That's my child. That's my wonderful creation. The more time we spend with God, that assurance overtakes every doubt we ever have, every insecurity. Oh, we'll have those moments when we come up against a challenge or those leaps of faith. Oh my goodness, he has had me, it feels like he jumping off a cliff of, uh, uh, for faith. And, and your knees may be knocking, you may be shaking some, but see, that's not fear. That's just letting you know, I gotta rely on God, it's too big for me. And it should cause us to move even closer to him in surrender and submission. Lord God, whoo we I, I, I can't handle this without you. When we live in that way, when we live on that plane, disappointments may come, but they won't overtake you. You may have to pull back for a minute and regroup, but the love of God is right there waiting for us to wrap us up and say, it's okay, it's okay. And here's the other thing. The more we spend time with God in that intimate way, the more we will find that he'll warn us of certain things. He'll warn us, no, that's not the, the, the agreement I have for you. No, that is, don't, don't take that offer. Or he'll warn, you'll have a feeling that, ah, something's off with this. And, if we, and that's when we have to go with him if we're uncertain. And Lord, I'm not feeling right about this. Is this of you? Is this something you desire or, yeah, a desire for me to take? And he'll let you know. He'll let you know. Either you'll get that feeling of no, you'll hear a no, or the other party will pull out. But some kind of way, he's going to make sure that we 
his wonderful children <laughs> are not caught up. So the other part that we have um, to look forward to is understanding that he's the one with the plan. He's the one who devised the plan. He's created the plan. He established the plan, meaning it's already done. So who better to go to and to rest in than with him who knows the way that he made for us? He's not trying to figure it out. We're on one street and he said, well, I don't know. I wasn't expecting Teddy to take that turn over there. Let me see. What can I do for her now? No. <laughs> he, know, he has the way that he set. He knows the way we're going to choose. He knows we were going to veer off. And he's already made the way for us to come back. The Holy Spirit leads us. His, God's own spirit leads us. And by his own shed blood through Jesus Christ, who came for us, we can have that intimacy with him. Jeremiah 31, 3 says, The Lord appeared from of old to me, Israel, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you and continued my faithfulness to you. You see, the Lord, I see that as God let, showing us love how he, he loves us but also showing us how to love receive it receive him that's how we love properly that's how we can love wholeheartedly that's how we can love obediently meaning obedient to whatever his instruction is oh know that god is faithful know that he loves you step back for a minute if you have to and just sit with him and say lord i'm feeling some type of way right now whoo it was a rough one, or I'm disappointed with this God, and how do I proceed? What do I do? And sometimes it's just a matter of just sit still or go for a walk. That kind of, that's an, a way of be still also. Be still is not just sitting in a straitjacket somewhere, but sometimes it's take a walk, take a drive, have a moment, just you and God. Let him love on you. Let him romance you. Let him fellowship with you. Let allow him to draw you in, meaning get up close in there. Get up close, right up under his wing. Get in God's armpit. That's daddy's armpit waiting for you. Anywho, that's all I have for you today. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged through the love of God and know that he is not going to let us fall. He is not going to let us be overtaken. If we fall, get up. Let daddy dust you off and get back on, on track. That's all I have for you today. God bless you. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Bye-bye.